Hello YouTube, welcome to a new Sin Anatomy video. As you probably know, I love iOS music apps, from synthesizers, drum machines, effects, MIDI sequencers, and more. There are many great and creative apps on iOS that on top do not cost a lot of money. However, there are also people who cannot work with iOS because they can't make music on a tablet or it's not their workflow. I can understand this and respect this decision. iOS is not made for everyone. There are also people who love iOS music apps, but only because of the apps, and less for working on an iOS DAW per example. I can understand that very well, and maybe I'm one of those who prefer to use this instrument and effects on iOS, but not so to record them into a DAW like Cubasis. So in this video I would like to show you how you can benefit from iOS music apps if you probably work in a DAW on Mac. Sorry Windows users, what I'm going to show here is only available for Mac. But if you want to do something like this, either use a special interface like the iConnect Audio from iConnectivity or use an app like StudioMax, but test showed however that these apps are very unstable and often do not work. So maybe use a classic audio interface and stream the audio from one interface to another. But if you want to use these apps, be careful. Apple has built a technology in macOS called IDAM. It's not IDM, the music style, but IDAM, it's Inter-Device Audio MIDI. With this, you can integrate the iPad or iPhone directly into your macOS operating system with the help of a simple lightning or USB cable. This can be used to transmit the audio and MIDI data to any DAW. So it turns your iPad or iPhone into a virtual two-channel audio interface. And now I will show you how you can do this. So the first step is connecting your iPad to your Mac using a lightning cable or USB-C. This depends on which iPad you're using. I use here an iPad Pro from 2017, which still use the lightning connector. And this goes directly to my MacBook Pro in the USB-C port. So you're connecting only the iPad directly to the MacBook. Important here, don't use an adapter like this, because then the connection doesn't work. So you need to connect it directly to the USB port and of course, then the iPad also charge, but it, what is very nice. When that, this is done, we go to the audio MIDI setup in macOS, and then you can see you, the different devices. And on the left side here, you can see um, your iPad. Here it's my name, and then the iPad, then you press enable, then your iPad is enabled. You can see here on the list an iPad, but also your other audio interfaces. And what is here important, you need to create a, a great device because you be using here a pseudo virtual audio interface with the iPad, but also our normal audio interface. So I use here the audio fuse, but also my iPad. So we create a new a great device on the bottom here. And let's rename this like iPad setup. So what we need now to do is we choose our main audio interface. So it's the audio fuse in my case. Then you see audio fuse and then different channels. So we have here eight channels and also different outputs. And we choose also iPad. Then you see a second audio interface is done here. And here on the right side, you have here the channel nine and 10 where iPad sends. I put also here drift correction on it and you have here the clock source and the sample rate. I put here only uh, 44, but you can also put it to 48. You need to open your door. In my case, it's Ableton Live. I'm now here on the Ableton Live. So I go now here on my preferences and then you put on the audio input devices. You take to the iPad, not to iPad, but to the aggregate device, so here iPad setup. And what is here important, you know, you must to activate all the channels because on nine and 10, the iPad sends the audio in. Then we go here to audio from nine to 10 and let's see what happens. So you stream your audio from the iPad to Ableton Live. 
What an amazing feature. Of course, you can not only stream the audio from the Minimoog app, you can also take another app, for example here Borderlands, And with apps like AUM, you can add also effects to it and then send it to your door. So like here, Ableton Live. So you see, it's very simple. And so you can uh, route your audio out of your iPad to your MacBook or iMac. And so you can record them without using any ports on your audio interface. So maybe you ask yourself now, is it possible to use a MIDI keyboard so you can play the synth while transferring the audio to the MacBook or to the iMac? I say yes. So for this, I have connected a simple keyboard for Maturia to my MacBook. And then um, you need to choose your MIDI to iPad. I go again to, to my Model D app. And in the settings, you choose IDAM audio host or the MIDI host here. And then you can play your synth also with keyboard. You can see it works. So you can play your synth also from your door with a keyboard to the iPad and then the audio uh, will be sent from the iPad to your MacBook. Maybe there's a bit of latency, but for me personally, it was fine. So I could play my synths also with a keyboard. What you can do also is using your iPad as a MIDI controller or as MIDI sequencer, for example. So for example, I take here a simple MIDI sequencer. It's the MIDI step. And I load here a synthesizer from my list. I take, for example, Diva. It's a huge synth. And then I take here, for example, this patch here. But I use again for MIDI my. <laughs> That's a good sound. And then if you want now to use the MIDI out of your iPad to the MIDI in of your Ableton Live, for example, you need to take here MIDI from, and we go here to iPad, and then you press on, and you choose in your MIDI sequencer, of course, settings. For example, here you have here the IDM MIDI host also as MIDI out, and let's see. So it works. And so you can use your favorite MIDI sequence from, from your iPad also for controlling your synths in your door. That's quite handy for all the doors who doesn't have some uh, big sequencer possibilities. So you can use also your iPad for doing this. So this is everything you can do with this technology. You can send audio from your iPad to your Mac. You can send MIDI from your iPad to your Mac, but also MIDI from your door to your app, iPad. So both directions are possible. For audio, there is only one direction. And so you see your iPad can be used also as sound module. So if you love, for example, the Minimoog app, but you want to record it in your DAW, this is an excellent way to do it. So maybe let me know in the comments below. What do you think about this idea? Are you using it already? Let me know in the comments below. And if you have also some questions about it or you have some problems, 
Also, let me in the comments below. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Big thanks for watching and hope you see you again in one of my next videos. Bye.